programming languages are not equal. That is why today we are going to be ranking them on a tier list to show which one is truly superior and which one is the most trash. So here we have like I guess the average ratings. So I agree with this mostly but there are some things here that I do not agree with at all. This one I agree with semi. You could tell that this guy is definitely a web developer. JavaScript, Python, Java, S tier, and then A tier we have HTML and CSS, which I pretty much disagree with. But you put C sharp in the Stop very it. end, Get heavily disagree with that. This guy, 100% low level programmer. Because we got C, we got Rust. You can't even look at it. it's Rust right there. Um, and then we got Go, Python. So I do want to create our own now. Here we have the tier list. If you don't know what tier lists are, it's basically for us to rank specific topics. Programming languages we're going to rank. S tier would be the very top. So F being the very lowest. So that would be like the trash programming languages. S would be the god tier programming languages. So we got assembly. Assembly is that low level programming language that I've only used once to be honest. And the only time I did use it was when I was reading it and interpreting it for a class. Not something that you would use on the daily, but it's definitely a foundational programming language. It's the great granddaddy of programming languages and definitely something to understand so that you could understand other programming languages. So I'll put that in the C tier. Definitely makes sense. So we got bash scripting. Definitely something to learn when dealing with the command line. I would love to learn more about it, but just having got the time, it's something to automate your workflow. So I'll put that in the B tier because you need to learn command line. Now we have C programming language. Now this programming language, complicated as hell. But if you are willing to learn about memory management and systems level design, then you should learn C. It's all about low level programming and it's something that's being used to make operating systems. So the C programming language, definitely foundational. And since assembly was the great granddaddy, I would say that the C programming language is the granddaddy of programming languages. I would say the mainstream granddaddy of programming languages. So because of that, we're going to put that to A tier. Now we have C++. Now let me tell you about C++. Pretty sure every programmer wanted to learn about C++. And because it's pretty complicated you still got to learn about pointers and memory management when learning about c++ but it's extremely versatile and is used in so many applications that you all you'd use from a day-to-day -day basis so games app computer applications and the unreal engine to make games any video game definitely has some c++ blood in it so i'm gonna put that in the a tier C Sharp, love that language. Almost like Java, but for making some Microsoft applications or Unity, so .NET. And in the past, I've used C Sharp to make Unity games. So it's something that I have experience in, people utilize. So putting that in the B tier. So CSS, I don't know why this is in the tier maker at all for programming languages. So I don't even think it's Turing complete and it's here. It's to style websites, so it would be kind of like the designer of programming languages, but the only things that utilize CSS is web programming. So I'll put that in the F tier. Fortran, um, don't know too much about Fortran. Pretty sure it's used for mathematical stuff or for, in the, for academics. So I will put that in the C tier or D tier. I don't know that much about it. So correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. So now we have Golang, and with Golang, it's mostly for network programming. Google's the one that made this programming language, and it's not something I've learned in the past, but definitely looking into it. So I'm going to put that in the B tier. Um, Haskell, so a lot of academics use this. It's a functional programming language. I believe Cardano's ecosystem utilizes this. So C tier, in my opinion. I haven't used it. Maybe Cardano blows up, but for now... It's staying in the C tier. All right, HTML, come on, like programming. Most things are kind of structured like a HTML file when dealing with GUIs. So I know XML and stuff like that, but HTML as a whole is a foundational programming language. It's a, it's the backbone of a lot of websites. So in terms of future prospects of HTML, it's definitely gonna, it's here to stay. So I'll put that in the C tier. Um, I don't want to put it very well up because it's not a programming language per se. 
So now we have Java. Java is one of those languages that follow the philosophy of run once and then make once and then run anywhere. And with Java, it's so versatile as a first language to learn because you understand object-oriented programming and types. With Java, it's definitely a good first language to learn. And I'm going to put that in the S tier. I've always wanted to learn when I was younger because of Minecraft. Definitely an S tier language. So now we have JavaScript. So just JavaScript. We're going to ignore everything else. So JavaScript is kind of ugly in my opinion. But you can make it look beautiful by utilizing NPM packages or other things. to just kind of like wow. pamper it up. You know what I mean? So it's definitely not an S tier or A tier in my opinion. But definitely a B tier. I heard it was made in a week. So that should explain a lot of things. But from a day-to-day -day basis, I use JavaScript a lot. The amount of errors that I stumble upon when using JavaScript is insane. We're going to be putting that into the B tier. Because if I were to say TypeScript, I would put that in an A tier. But we're going to leave it right now in B tier because it's JavaScript. Like, I do use JavaScript. I know there's going to be a lot of people that hate that opinion. Sure but I do use that? JavaScript a lot. However, the amount of bugs that pop up because of JavaScript and how it's non-typed and the weird um, objects equals arrays business, the way that it just deals with all of the conditional conditions is weird to me. All right, so now we have Kotlin. Definitely something to learn in my bucket list. It's a derivative of Java and it's utilized for Android development. Definitely something to look at. It's kind of like Swift, but for Android. I believe it's cross-platform. We'll put that in the a you see it here something to learn it's like around this area and maybe changes in the past okay so now we have latex latex absolutely love this language but is it a language it's like html a lot of academic papers use it for formatting their papers you could use it for resumes absolutely beautiful love the fonts and the documents that are created with latex however is it a programming language? I don't think so. So I'm going to put that in the C tier. Okay, so now we have Lisp. It's used a lot for data manipulation, I believe. And it's an old language. So around the Fortran area, something to learn, I guess. Because it's kind of like assembly, maybe? Or don't know. But I'm putting in the D tier. Lua, all you job, um, Roblox developers out there, you'll love this. I'm going to put this in the B tier. Lua is... You mainly utilized a lot as a scripting language. From what I know, it's used in Roblox development. So we'll put that in the C tier. So MATLAB. Use that only once in a linear algebra class. Great for dated visualization. I will put that though in the D tier because I don't think it's a programming language either. Okay, wrong. I'm going to correct myself. I'll put this in the C tier. It's around this same area. All right, so now we have MySQL. I love this. I mean, it's also, it's a structured query language. So it's for parsing out databases or even updating to databases. I will put that in the B tier. So now we have Perl. This is a programming language that is primarily used for text manipulation, data management, and all of that. Um, I'm pretty sure the popularity has dwindled in the past few years. So I'm going to put this in the D tier. PHP, Facebook uses it, I'm pretty sure still. However, it's getting kind of old. I mean, it's still a high and thriving programming language, but there are still a lot of back-end frameworks, back-end languages that I would choose over PHP. Still something to look at. It's almost like jQuery in a way. So I'll put this in the C tier. Uh, Visual Basic, I'm going to ignore this one. It's not really... Not Visual Basic, PowerShell. I'm gonna ignore that. Just put it. Yeah, I feel like we're not gonna talk about that. Python. I love Python. Even though it's dynamically typed, it's an amazing language that is versatile as hell. However, it still has its drawbacks in terms of speed and efficiency. I do know that in 3.10, it's gonna become statically typed. So from 3.9, I believe, to 3.10. So I'm gonna put this in the A tier. R programming. I will put this in the C tier and the reason for that would be because the R programming language is mainly used for uh, data visualization and data management kind of similar to MATLAB in a way so I'm gonna put this in C Ruby so it was definitely a back-end framework or back-end programming language that a lot of people were willing to use in the past however not a lot of people are using it now it's kind of a 
dying language, so I'm going to put this in the C tier. Let me revert back. It's not a dying language. It's more so not a widely used language compared to Python or JavaScript. All right, so you can't really see this right here, but it's Rust. Rust, um, or they call themselves Rustations, the people that utilize it, is definitely one of those languages that is going to change the way that programming is used or low-level programming is done. So I'm going to put this in the B tier. Swift is something I'm looking to learn. Definitely it's used for iOS development or just Apple development in general. And for making stuff on Apple devices, it's best to learn Swift. Pretty sure Swift is the thing that replaced Objective-C, which is the other programming language that Apple products used. So I'm going to put Swift in the B tier. And then Visual Basic, don't going to comment. So if I had to change anything, so in the S tier we have Java. I may move JavaScript up a little bit was too harsh on the rating ruby look i love this programming language i've used it in the past over with ruby on rails so i may move it up one more like look it's not a dying language it's just not a lot of people are willing to learn it and i was a bit harsh on you ruby so we're gonna move it to b latex i believe should be there we might move okay i'm gonna move c plus plus to s here it's just used widely c plus plus and it's something to keep on learning it's like pretty low level in my opinion, but it's a low level program language, but I'm going to keep on the S tier because of how many applications utilize it. And it's just something that you should know if you want to get into game development or app development. So yeah, I'll put this in the S tier. So this is my final list and yeah.